When I was in college, there was a period of time in my life when I struggled a lot. For those of you who know the symptoms, I had a difficult time getting out of bed. My grades began to plummet. I had a difficult time motivating myself to do much of anything. One of the things that can help in that is if there's someone else who understands this and can go through that process with you. And I had a friend who unfortunately was going through that at the same time. And it was particularly helpful because we both grew up in communities of faith. And faith can really help. And for me, it was particularly helpful because I grew up in a community of faith that, yes, faith was important, but we also believed in using doctors and therapists and things like that. Unfortunately for him, he grew up in a community of faith that said, as long as you believe, as long as you pray, as long as you have enough faith, you don't need any of that stuff. Because as long as you pray and as long as you have enough faith that you ask for it and God is going to give it to you. His experience ended up with a continued descent into depression, disappointment, despair, and disillusionment with God because he had been told that if he did this and he not had enough faith that it would work. So he's like, either I don't have enough faith, which was not particularly helpful in that moment, or there was no God. On the other hand, I had prayers for God, but I had therapists and I had doctors to help me, and I was able to recover and thrive and be grateful for all of those things that can happen. And this is one of the reasons that we're talking about this idea of if then, right? Talking about the nature of our relationship and how we understand the nature of our relationship between ourselves and God. Because if we believe the nature of that relationship and our relationship with the Bible is one thing, then it leads us to acting in a certain way. And that certain way has consequences for our lives in the world. And if you believe, if you believe that you just have to pray, that you just have to have enough faith, and that everything is going to get done for you, that leads you down a certain path that ultimately and ironically leads to discouragement, despair, and destruction. And there is one thing that I know about Jesus, and that Jesus has nothing to do with dragging us into darkness, despair, discouragement, or disillusionment about God. So that cannot possibly be how it is. So we're going to listen to this scripture today and talk a little bit about that and see what it reveals about this nature of this relationship today. So as Roger said, we are in Mark chapter 11, and we're going through verses 22 through 24, and it starts with this, have faith in God. Let's just stop there. Have faith in God, because that is loaded right there. What is faith? Because some people are taught that faith is just this this mental or spiritual belief, that all you have to do is psychologically or mentally agree and think, yes, I believe in God, I have faith in God, and that that is faith. It and you are done. But the problem is that faith was never meant to be a passive thing. Faith is always meant to be an active thing. And when Jesus said, have faith in God, and I represent God this way as light and something shining and mysterious and guiding us along because the word God is so damaged today. So many people abuse that word, and it's just a three-letter word. It comes up with like these images of Zeus throwing lightning around and things like that. That's not God, right? So we represent God differently here so that we can expand our idea of what God is about. But have faith in God that is always active with Jesus. I have a question for you, and this is a legitimate question, so I'm I'm not rhetorical. I want you to actually answer this. When we talk about faith, we say we have a what of faith. What of faith. When you're taking a what? Taking a leap of faith. We do not take a sit of faith. Right? We do not take a lie down of faith. We act in faith. We take leaps of faith. It is active and it is not passive. Now here's the next part that's really important in this passage. And it's the kind of thing in the passage that is critically important. But sometimes you miss without the context. We're going to get into the context of this. Jesus says... This mountain, 
Jesus doesn't say in this passage, a mountain. Jesus says, this mountain, have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. So I wanna talk a little bit about this mountain. So David, would you please put the first slide up? This is a picture of a mountain in and around Jerusalem, like near Jerusalem, all right? And you can see this for miles and miles and miles. This is a picture I took about four years ago when I went to the Holy Land. For those of you who are interested, in January, we're going back to the Holy Land. We still have some spots open if you would like to go and see this kind of stuff. But this is a picture of a particular mountain. David, if you can go to the second picture, please, that'd be great. All right, so you see the higher mountain on the right, does anybody see that kind of flat section on the left? Everybody see the flat section on the left? That's where that mountain used to be. That mountain on the right used to be there on the left. King Herod moved that mountain. King Herod, to great expense, a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of resources, moved that mountain from there to there. It looks like it's not very far. It's actually, when you get closer, it's a strategic change. He was changing it for strategic purposes. But there was also another reason that he did it. He did it because he was telling everybody, because you can see this thing for miles and miles and miles. Like everybody in the area would be able to see what is going on here. Just Herod saying, I can move a mountain. And you can't. I can move a mountain. And you can't. All of you people who are oppressed, all of you people who are poor, all of you people down there who can see this mountain, see me? I can move a mountain. You can't do anything against me. So do what I say, because there's nothing that you can do about it. So what does Jesus say? Jesus says, truly, have faith in God, an active thing. Truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you don't doubt that, it will happen. It will take place. Now, why does Jesus say thrown into the sea? Because Jesus is looking at this mountain, and he is trying to inspire these people to say, you know what, you're being told you can't do anything because of this power that you are being intimidated with in this world. But guess what? Herod, with all of his power, all of his money, all of his resources, could only move that mountain from here to here. All that effort, everything, could only move that mountain from here to here. And if we do this together, if you listen to me, and you're willing to be inspired, and you're willing to do this, we can take this mountain together, and we can get rid of it entirely. We can get rid of it entirely. The sea that he was talking about is like a couple miles away. But if we do this together, he was trying to inspire and oppress people who were told that they had no ability to do anything, that together they could do something really important. Jesus was trying to inspire the people and give them agency. And for those of you who don't know what agency means, it means to give people the ability to do something, to change something, to make something happen. A real estate agent helps people buy or sell houses, get something done. An agent for a sports team or a musician or somebody else helps them get work, helps them get a better contract. Agency is the ability to get something done. Jesus is trying to inspire people and show them that yes, despite everything you are being told by Herod and all the other powers, and that you have nothing and you can't change anything, that you can and together we can get this done. But here's the catch. Faith is not magic. Belief is not magic. Jesus is not magic. God is not magic. Prayer is not magic. When Jesus is talking here, things that sound like it's saying all you have to do is have faith and pray and it will be done for you. That's how some people take this and it leads to destruction and despair and disillusionment. Have faith in God. We heard how that is active. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe. 
Belief isn't just a mental thing. It is a whole body thing. Earlier in this series, we did the hokey pokey, right? We did the hokey pokey to demonstrate. We did like the whole self in, right? It's not just a mental thing. Jesus said with all our mind and all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength. That's what belief is. All of that all in. All of that. And when we put all that in, and that you say and believe it will come to pass. And here's one of the tricky, tricky phrases that sometimes get people tripped up. So it says, it will be done for you, which sounds like it's just saying, and God's just going to do everything. Problem is, what that means today is different than what it meant then. It was a turn of phrase just saying, it will happen. It will come to pass. That if you do this, it will be yours. It will happen. It will come to pass. It doesn't just mean that magically something's going to snap and it is going to get done for you. This whole thing is not magic. And if you view it that way, then you will ultimately be disappointed in God every time. Because it never says in the Bible anywhere Never anywhere, not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament, not by Jesus, not by God, that if you pray and if you have enough faith that it's just going to magically get changed. Because it works in a totally different way. And the idea that we need to believe is a way to inspire us and to give us agency to action. It is us saying, God, I know that I can't do this myself. I know that this thing is so big that if I try to do this myself, it's not possible to get it done. But if you're with me, and if you do this, I believe that it is possible. And because I believe that it is possible, I will try. And I will keep trying. And I know that you'll be with me. And I will keep trying, and I will keep trying, and I will keep trying. Because if I don't believe that this is the case, this is why it says you must believe. Because if you don't believe it's possible, you don't start in the first place. If you don't believe it's possible, you never get started. And we're not trying to pray to change God's mind. It's not like God's like, you know what? I'm going to have this mountain on top of everybody, and everybody's going to be oppressed, and it's going to be really bad. But if they pray hard enough, I'll stop that. What kind of God is that? It's not the kind of God I would want to follow. It's not the kind of God you should want to follow either. The point of the prayer is to change and shape us. Is to shape and change us and inspire us and give us agency and enough faith and enough belief to get started, to take that first or next faithful step in the belief that together we can get something done that everybody else is telling us can't be done. Anybody feel like this? Anybody feel like this ever? There are all kinds of things that can do this. Personal mountains that are on you, that you're just like the whole mountain's on you, you're just trying to push it up, and you're sweating, you're just like, someone help me, something help me. And then there are all kinds of other things going on in the world. What are some of the societal mountains that are going on right now? Anybody just throw one out there, yell one out. What are some of the societal mountains that people tell us we can't do anything about that are just the big things out there? Poverty. Poverty. Racism. Environmental. Racism. 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 Absolutely. I'm going to add one. Christianity. Right. We're here in a Christian church, and I'm going to call out Christianity for being one of the mountains causing more problems than good in the world in this country right now because of turning God against the people, for making God, for making this cross a weapon against other people and telling other people you can't do anything unless you do it like this. And that's not what this is about. And when we're here like this, whether it's the environment or poverty or racism or Christianity, you want to go change something, there are people, there are voices out there saying, you can't make a difference. The issue's too big. How are you going to make a difference? Don't even try. Or this one in the environmental movement right now, 
But some people are trying since they've lost the argument on science and everything else. It's too late. It's too late. Some of the best people I know who are passionate about the environment question whether it is a good idea for people to have children to bring them into a world because they're so concerned about what can happen and they've given up on the possibility that we can change. This is what prayer is for. This is what this passage is for, that we do not give up, no matter how big the mountain seems, no matter what people are telling us is not possible. Because when we do, when we take that leap of faith, when we take that faithful step forward, Instead of this, we start to see God on the horizon. We start to see a little bit of light and a little bit of change. And then we take that next faithful step and that next faithful step. And if you take that faithful step and that next faithful step, then what's going to start to happen is instead of this mountain being there on top of you alone, you will have someone there with you holding that mountain up and you will no longer be alone and that will be you and that will be the living Jesus and that will be God and the spirit inside of you shining out of you because that has been triggered through your prayer and shaping yourself towards the will of God and the message of God that's saying you need to be in on this and you can make a difference and together we can do things that everybody else is telling you that we cannot do. That includes addressing poverty, it includes eradicating racism, it includes fixing the justice system, it includes saving the environment, and it includes every single individual burden that you each have on your heart. If you have been taught if you online have been taught that if you pray hard enough and you are sincere in it and you have enough faith that everything is going to change because someone else is going to do that, that will only lead to depression, despair, and disillusionment with God. But if you look at this as being inspired towards agency in doing something and knowing that when you do this, that you are shaped more along the lines of the way, more along the lines of the will of God, more along the lines of the way of the Spirit. And if we can partner and do these things together, then there is no mountain that we cannot move.